All power and all glory belongs to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, as well as your Lord too. Amen. Welcome again, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, let's have a good time tonight. Uh, we're going to get fed the word of the Lord tonight by our own very Dr. Mark B.C. Taylor. So come on, y'all. Get, get relaxed. Get your Bible, get your pen and your paper, your glass of water, and let's get ready to have a wonderful time with the word. Uh, we had a wonderful Pentecost Sunday, and we're still thriving off of that. So I hope you're still full of the Holy Spirit. In the interim, let's start our devotion. And we're going to do a song, scripture, Old Testament, New Testament, and a word of prayer. Amen. So join me. And here we go. The windows of heaven are open. The fire is falling right now. I got joy, joy, joy in my soul. Since Jesus made everything right. God always for you because 
because of the grace of God, which was given to you in Christ Jesus, that in every way you were enriched in you, with all speech and all knowledge, even as the testimony to Christ was confirmed among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ, who will sustain you to the end, give us in the days of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. I appeal to you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that all of you agree that there be no dissension among you, but that you be united in the same mind and the same judgment. For him, and this is the word of the Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Join me in the word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we give you praise, honor, and glory on another Wednesday, Father, that you've allowed us to come into your house to learn from you and worship you. Father God, we want to thank you for filling us with the Holy Spirit on Pentecost Sunday. But Father, we need more and more of you, Father. Let, it, let your Spirit fill us until it overflows, Father God. But we also, Father, we just thank you for your grace and your mercy, Father. Uh, you are the omnipotent one that is a giver, Father. We thank you. We thank you, Lord. So Father God, right now, as we get ready to study your word, fill this fellowship hall with your presence, Lord God. Touch the man of God that's coming forth to lead us tonight, Lord God, Reverend Mark V. C. Taylor. Hide him behind the cross, Father, but let what you want to be heard and teach, use him in a mighty way, Father. Let it come forth through him, Father. But Father, at the same time, give him a fresh fire and a filling of your spirit constantly, Father, because he's always on the battlefield, Father, spreading the gospel of Jesus Christ. Lord God, I'd be amiss if I didn't ask you to touch our members of the Church of the Open Door. Father, those that are watching, those that are in the hospitals, those that have lost loved ones, Father God, please send your comforting angels around them, Father God. And Father, let us continue to encourage one another, Father. We don't take anything for granted, Lord God, because we never know when we're not going to see another one that might be right next to us, Lord. So thank you, Father. Thank you for waking us up this morning, Father, and keeping us. Father God, and as you move forth to this community, Father God, I ask that you uh, touch the mothers and fathers, Father, that are raising their children, Father God. Lord God, I ask that the violence be put down, Lord God. Let the young people realize they need to turn to you for knowledge, understanding, and the right way to live, Lord God. There's nothing in these streets, Father. Let them turn to you, Father, and you can show them the right way. And use us to help them to get there, Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, I even ask that you send your love around the world. Touch the missionaries that are in um, areas like St. Vincent, Lord God, Haiti, Father, and Europe, Lord God. Wherever the people need to know about you, Father, use them in a mighty way. And Lord God, I ask that you bless our deacons, our ministers, our trustees. Father God, as we continue to work on what we can do here, here at the Church of the Open Door, while we are here on this earth, because we know you're coming back and you're coming back real soon. So Father, bless your holy name, Father. We thank you for all that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And I feel motivated to read another scripture to you. Um, while I uh, await for our teacher to come forth. And Isaiah 34 goes like this. Draw near, O nations, to give and hearken, O peoples. Let the earth listen, and all that fills it, the world and all that comes from it. For the Lord is enraged against all the nations, and furious against all their hosts. He has doomed them, has given them over for slaughter. This land shall be cast out. And the stench of their corpus shall, corpse shall rise. The mountains shall flow with their blood. All the hosts of heaven shall rot away. And all the skies roll up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall. And leaves fall from the vine. Like leaves falling from the fig tree. 
This is the word of the Lord in Isaiah 34. Mm -hmm. Wow. Now, can I read you one of my favorite scriptures? Matthew 24, verses 14. I always keep this scripture up, up front because it's, it keeps me reminding of uh, the time that we have here. And Matthew 24, verses 14, reads like this. And focus my eyes. And here we go. And the gospel of the kingdom will be preached throughout the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Woo! Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, as you're getting ready to get fed the word, um, here we go one more time. Ephesians 1, verses 3. Blessed be God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. He destined us in love to be his sons through Jesus Christ, according to the purpose of his will, to the praise of his glorious grace, which he freely bestowed on us in the beloved. In him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of our trespasses, according to the riches of his grace, which he lavished upon us. For he has made known to us in all wisdom and insight the mystery of his will, according to his purpose, which he set forth in Christ, as a plan for the fullness of time to unite, to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, according to the purpose of him, who accomplishes all things according to the counsel of his will. We, who first hope in Christ, have been destined and appointed to live for the praise of his glory. In him, you also, who have heard the word of the truth, the gospel of your salvation, and have believed in him, were sealed with the promise of Holy Spirit, which is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. For this reason, because I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints, I do not cease to give thanks for you, remembering you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and of revelation in the knowledge of him. And this is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Thanks be to God. Father God, once again we come before you, Father, thanking you for your word. Because, Father, your word is so powerful, it does not come back void, Lord God. Father, we thank you for helping it to guide our lives, Lord God. Because we truly need your word not just to read it, but have it embedded inside us, Lord God, so it can spring forth like a fountain, so we can bless someone else with your word, Lord God. Help us to get the word embedded in us, Father, in memory, Father God, so we can just go forth and say, blessed is the name of the Lord, Father. And we can quote and say scriptures when it's in need for someone that's in need. But Father, I'd be remiss if I didn't lift up those that are um, sick, God. There are a lot of homeless people running around that are sick, Lord God. I pray that you touch them, Lord God, and have them to get the help that they need, Lord God, because there are so many things going on in the subway systems, in the streets, Lord God. Father, do what you do best, Father. Touch their minds, Father, to help them to turn around and see that, the, that they can have a better life with you, Lord. Father, I ask that you touch the doctors that are working on those that are going through mental trials and tribulations, that you can help them to turn around, Lord God, so they can live a better life. Mm, please, Lord, do what you do best, Lord. Father, mm, we beg you to do this right now, Father. Lord, we lift up our young people to you, Father. Father, as they get ready to come out of school, Father God, let them get the best education possible, Lord God. 
please, Lord, that when they come out, Father, give them the protection, Father. Let them be underneath your wings, Lord God. Mm. Glory to your name, Father. Because you are King of kings and Lords of Lords, Father. We give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. For you are worthy of the praise, Father. We thank you, Father. And we're still looking for an overflow of your Holy Spirit, Lord God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Name so, Jesus. Father, we love you. We adore you. We need you right now. Yes. Fill this place, Father. Fill, fill. As the man of God comes forth to lead, the, lead us in the word, fill him too, Lord, in the name of Jesus. So, Father, I thank you and I praise you, Father. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Oh, it's my pleasure to bring forth the man of God. Our own Reverend Dr. Mark V.C. Taylor. Yes, Lord. Thank you. God has not given you the spirit of fear, power, love, and a sound mind. Truly, all power, all glory, all honor belong to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to thank God for you being here tonight. Uh, we want to thank God for another great day. Uh, I am so happy today. Uh, I just returned from Washington, D.C., where one of our daughters of our church was a graduate of Georgetown University School of Business, I believe, with a master's in uh, business specializing in human resources, Selena Barnes. Let's give God a hand. Graduation was on Monday, which uh, is my official day of rest. But she uh, wanted me to come, and sometimes you have to sacrifice, especially for your children. And I told her, you know that I love her because I don't do anything on Monday. Mm -hmm. But I had to get up and go to the airport, get on the plane. Woo, Lord! And I uh, thank the Lord for keeping me uh, on the highway. Uh, in the plane, in the air, the Lord kept me, you know, when you fly, you don't have to just uh, come down. While we were in the second flight, plane dropped down, everybody said, whoa, I was sleeping. <laughs> that drop woke me up. Uh, but God is faithful, and I praise God for God's faithfulness. Uh, God is my father and my mother, amen, and uh, the Lord bless. Uh, the graduation was wonderful. It rained for two hours. Amen. We stood out in the rain, but we were happy and excited. Uh, she didn't sit. It was in a baseball stadium, and they didn't have them sitting together. So we all were together. Uh, uh, myself, Selena, and her sister, Tiana, was also a daughter of uh, the Church of the Open Door. And uh, then I was able to see some family members and I was able to see some friends. So it was a very great trip. And then I woke up early this morning and got uh, uh, together and checked out of the hotel, a very nice hotel, and uh, came through the Ronald Reagan Airport, back to the John F. Kennedy Airport, and I sat down for a minute, and here we are tonight. Oddly enough, the longest journey Today was not to the airport. It was not even in the air. It took me longer to get to church from my house <laughs> and everything else. But I'm just happy that uh, uh, I was praying to, to make it, and I made it. I'm excited. Uh, I'm still recovering from Sunday, great Sunday Pentecost, as Deacon Flowers have said, and uh, I'm still full, even though uh, outwardly I'm a little. Uh, Jet lag, I think, but I thank God uh, for the grace to make it back. Because whenever I travel, as nice a time as I have, I always want to come back home. Hey, Amen. I want to come back home. I wanted to come to church. I'm excited about coming to church. I'm always excited about the Lord, uh, no matter what state I'm in. Uh, so I'm happy to be here tonight. I'm happy you're here tonight. You, you, and even you. Hey, Amen. And I'm here tonight to give you flowers. Thank you, Deacon Flowers, for leading us in session. God bless you and reward you for your faithfulness. I'm happy with my technician who rushed away from uh, other commitments to come and fulfill her duties tonight. Sister Zion Richardson. Yes. Thank you, Sister Richardson. Yes. Amen for being here tonight. 
Amen. So uh, we're not going to delay. We're going to get right into the Word of God. Come with me to First Timothy. In our text is where we are. And we talked about command authority in verse 1. We spent some time in verse 2 talking about uh, children in the faith. And I pose to you the question, I hope you remember, who are you mentoring? Who are you mentoring? You should consciously be mentoring a number of people. Did you know you're not going to stay on this earth forever? And who's going to carry on after you? <laughs> that also relates to who's going to take care of you when you get old and sick and can't take care of yourself. You should think about that. Amen. Because you know, um, some people in those times, they run away and flee. Uh, but but that's, a, that's a side question. Main question is, who are you mentoring? Who are you pouring into the knowledge and strength and wisdom that you receive in this life? Who are your children in the faith? While I was away, somebody asked me, did I have any children? I said, yes. They said, oh, how many? I said, I got about 30. And they said, oh, <laughs> and then I said, well, they really are children in the faith because uh, the children that I met through the church, through my Christian uh, walk and service. And so then they gave me a different look because they thought I had 30 children. They was looking at me like, oh boy, you, you something else. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, who was your child in the faith? We said that Paul was a Pharisee. Uh, he had to be married. Uh, you would look at strangely if you didn't have any children as a man. People were like, well, what's, what's wrong with him? So he probably might have had some children that he was separated from. Um, you know, some, sometimes people are separated from their children. Uh, we know that sometimes parents leave the children, fathers leave the children sometimes, but uh, sometimes uh, the separation is, is with uh, the child that's separated from the parent. So uh, we don't know anything about any natural children of Apostle Paul. But we do know that especially Timothy is considered by him to be his true child in the faith. And he pours so much of himself into Timothy as we're going to see in this, uh, in this lesson. All right, so let's go to, and today, uh, and then we have talked extensively about grace. We've talked extensively about peace. And uh, so I want to greet everybody tonight with this greeting, grace, mercy, and peace from God, the Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord, Paul's signature term. I talked about how he inverted uh, the common term Jesus Christ to Christ Jesus, emphasizing the Messiahship of Jesus. Uh, and, and not that Jesus Christ is wrong in any way, but uh, just as he went from being Saul to Paul, and that meant something, so his emphasis uh, going from Jesus Christ to Christ Jesus means something. But tonight, in the rest of our time, we want to go forward to look at the third verse. Uh, and I'm going to ask you to stand while we just read this verse uh, in 1 Timothy chapter 1. <coughs> Excuse my voice. <coughs> 1 Timothy chapter 1, verse 3. I'm reading tonight from the Revised Standard Version. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, remain at Ephesus that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrines. Any different doctrines. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's bow our heads. God, we just want to say thank you for another wonderful night. God, I thank you for your faithfulness in bringing me through this. Thank you. The highway and the streets, yes. through the air, and back home. Oh, God, you kept me, Lord. You kept me. You kept me in uh, a strange hotel. Thank you. You kept me as I walked down the street. You enabled me to go to a beautiful graduation and see my daughter graduate, Lord. God, I just want to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Oh, God, you enabled me to see my family and my friends. God, I just want to say thank you. Oh, God, you're so faithful. You're so kind. You're so wonderful. God, we don't deserve it. 
And Lord, what can we render? We'll take the cup of salvation and we'll work hard in the grace of God. So take over tonight, get the glory, move by the Holy Spirit. Oh God, continue to drench us and overflow us in your spirit. Yes, Lord. So that, Lord, we can do your will on the earth. This is our prayer. In the mighty master's name of the Lord Jesus, we pray God's people say. Amen. Amen. Let's give God a hand. Give God another hand. Let's give God another hand. Now yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Excuse me. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. I was running all on, all on the telecast. Broadcast. Well, um, now, I want to break this <laughs> verse down. This is a great verse. And I want to draw your attention to the fact that Paul, first of all, says, um, um, Sister Richardson, go in your Bible and give me a different version. Uh, give me the, uh, the New Living Translation of verse 3. The scripture that I'm saying. Huh? First Timothy. Uh, first Timothy, chapter 1, verse 3. Now, Paul starts off saying, as I urged you when I was going to uh, Macedonia, I was talking about how he urged Timothy. Now, he didn't command Timothy. He urged him. And part of Christian leadership, there's a lot of leadership lessons in the book of Timothy, is to be a person who can urge people in the right direction. And I'm sure Paul, I'm sure Timothy took Paul's urging as a command. Just like when someone has authority over you and they urge you to do something, you 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 take it. If you respect the authority, you take it as a command. But here in RSB, it says, uh, Paul says he urged Timothy. What does it say in the New Living Translation? Um, uh, I found the, the message, but, um, New Living Trans... You found the message translation? Read that translation. Yeah. Uh -huh. It says, I advise you. And I advise you. Now, advise is a little bit different than urge. I like urge. New Living Translation says, I urge you as well. New Living Translation says, urge you as well. What translation? New King, New King says the same thing. New King James. Yes. You know, older people said King James is the Bible that Paul had. <laughs> Amen. We know that Paul didn't have King James. Translated in 1611 uh, by a team of scholars under the leadership of King James, I believe the first of yeah. England. Uh, King James didn't translate it. He was the leader of this. Uh, he was the initiative. He put together a team of scholars to do it. Uh, so, urge seems to be the dominant usage. And urge is a little bit different than advice. Uh, because urge means he kind of pressed upon him. He kind of uh, um, had a little bit of uh, forceful, forceful nudging. Okay, and part of Christian leadership is to urge people to go a certain way. Without your urging, it might not go uh, the way that you are putting forward. And so, uh, Paul was going to Macedonia and I, I think probably Timothy didn't want to leave him. But Paul knew that, number one, the church needed certain things. We should always be mindful of what our church needs. So many times our Christianity is very individualistic, uh, me and, and what I need. But we really should be mindful of what our church needs. And Sunday, uh, in the sermon, Adventures in the Spirit, in that text in 2 Corinthians 11, Paul said one of the things that was pressing on him was the daily anxiety of all of the churches. He spent time thinking about what the church needs. And I want you tonight to ask yourself, how often do you think about the church? In the seven things that we pray for, um, uh, these are the seven things. First, you thank God when you wake up in the morning. First, you thank God for another day. Then you pray for your family. Okay, then you pray for your church. Then you pray for your people. And that, and by your people, I mean black people. But also mean American people. And I mean human people. But you start off praying for black people. Because if you can't, 
pray for all your black brothers and sisters, you're still sick and mentally ill with white supremacy. And then after the fourth thing, you pray for your people, you pray for government authorities. As the Bible said, pray for leaders that they might do right, that they might be just. Then you pray for the suffering over all the earth. Most of the earth suffers. Not enough clean water, not enough food. Most of the governments in the earth are under warlords. I was uh, in Washington, D.C., and I got in an Uber, and my driver was a fellow from Mauritania. And we began to talk about Mauritania. <laughs> what they he told me, he said, in America, you have roads and street lights. He said, in Mauritania, there are no street lights. There are no, he said, there are no uh, stop signs. There are no street lights. There are no white things that mark off the street. They just in the street driving. And he said a lot of people take for granted things in the United States that other countries do not have. Mm. And so um, you always hear me say most human beings in the world live off of $3 a day. The, 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 the water that you washed your face with, they don't have. Okay, I was in the hotel and uh, uh, they had so many nice things in there. They had a restaurant in there. Uh, in your room, you had a microwave and a refrigerator. Uh, but uh, and then, of course, you had a nice bed to sleep in, you had air conditioning. But most human beings live, in, and, you, and it was safe. Most human beings live in unsafe conditions. Uh, they are poor and they're struggling. In a lot of areas of the world, gangs run the country, gangs run the neighborhood. When two of our deacons went to Brazil, they went to the Flavela, I believe it's called, I might be pronouncing it wrong, the Flavela the poor area, and they had to get the permission, the tourists had to get the permission of the gang leader to even bring them through there. Without the gang leader's permission, they could not go through. Mm. Uh, I knew uh, a woman whose brother was a missionary in Mexico, and she told me that the, 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 the drug gangs had made people cultivate, they, they destroyed all of the crops, all of the food crops, they destroyed all of the places for livestock, and they turned it into land to grow drugs. And uh, they exported the drugs. And so the, the drug gangs ran whole cities and whole areas. They were like state governments. And this is how it is in most of the earth. And with all the problems of the United States, that's why I'm not going anywhere. People say, you go to Africa? No, I love Africa, but I'm American. Hey, Amen. my ancestors died to make this country rich. And I'm sure we're going to fight uh, to enjoy all of those riches and fight to help this country do right. Uh, now, how did I get to all of that? <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, um, uh, it, it connects somehow. Yeah. Um, uh, we were talking we, about the seven principles. Yes, the seven principles, right. And then the last principles, thank you, Dean Flowers. I was talking about the seven things to pray for. So you thank God for another day, mm -hmm. all right? You just thank God that you woke up. Yes. Uh, you pray for your family. Ask all the family to seek God. You pray for your church. You pray for your people and all people. Uh, you pray for government leaders that they would do right. You pray for the suffering and the poor of the earth. And then you pray for yourself. Amen. Pray for yourself last. But the third thing uh, that, that we teach in terms of doctrine that you should pray for is your family. And I'm a living witness. If you pray for your family, God will open up doors in your family. Uh, recently, I took a trip to Chicago. I had a wonderful time. God opened doors. That's why I went up this record. God opened doors. God did turn them a little bit. They said, my voice is low. They can't hear me. <clears throat> my voice is a little rough from Sunday. You forgive me and travel. <clears throat> but uh, if, you, if, you, uh, uh, if you pray these seven things, uh, no, I'm saying about your family. Thank you, Dean. Uh, your family, uh, if you pray for your family, God opens doors in your family. If you pray for your church, God blesses the church. Why? Because as we know, the Lord answers prayer. He says, what? Well, ask and it shall be given. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door shall be opened to you. So let's get back to Paul here, okay? So, um... Paul is urging Timothy, and to be a leader in Christ, you've got to urge people to do right. You've got to urge people to reconsider. You've got to urge people to uh, do their duty. 
you have to urge people to study the word. You have to uh, be like Paul, because Paul was urging Timothy to stay at Ephesus, and Ephesus was a hard place. There was a lot of persecution, okay? And I believe, uh, I could be wrong, but I believe Paul had to run out of Ephesus because uh, the worshipers of Diana got upset and they chased him out. It's one of the dangerous adventures that he had. Um, but he left and told Timothy, look, you stay there. So Timothy was like, shoot, I want to leave you. I'm going to leave you with these crazy people. Paul said, uh, they know me. They're looking for me. They don't know you. You stay there and do what has to be done as a leader for Christ. And what is it that has to be done? Let's read further. As I urged you when I was going to Macedonia, that's the area of, of the Philippians, he, but he urged them, remain in Ephesus, that you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine. That you may charge certain persons not to teach any different doctrine. Now, in the King James Version, it says uh, that you may not depart from sound doctrine. Uh, what does it say in the New King James? Deacon uh, Flowers, verse three. While he's looking for that, the RSV says that we're using here: don't teach any different doctrine. The NIV says false doctrine. You got a version, Sister Richardson? That um, they say false. They say different. Yeah, different. They say the same. same Who is false. that? Who is that? The um, good news. Good News Bible yeah. says false doctrine. The New King, they teach no other doctrine. The New, the new King James says teach no other doctrine. Yes. Okay. The NIV says false doctrine. And the easy to read version says things, <clears throat> things not true. But I like, of course, the Bible I use, I like the RSV uh, because, and I believe it's closer to the Greek, uh, different doctrine. All right, Paul says, stay there and make sure they don't start teaching different doctrine. Now, this is very interesting because you know Ephesus is the place where they had all of the magic books. Mm -hmm. And if you uh, let's let's uh, let's go back uh, where in the book of Acts when they were at Ephesus, uh, the people on hearing Paul preach. And seeing Paul uh, take power from Simon, mm -hmm. uh, who, uh, who preached about Simon? Somebody preached about Simon the other day. He called himself the power of God. Um, So, if you go to Acts 19, it is, yes, it was Ephesus where the great god Artemis uh, was being worshipped. They chased Paul out of Ephesus. Um, and Paul told Timothy to stay there, and he went to Macedonia. Um, so many things happened at Ephesus. Um, Ephesus Ephesus was, yes, it wasn't Ephesus where they burned the magic books. There was a lot of spiritual power of an anti-godly nature, anti-godly, unchristian nature. There was a lot of demonic activity in Ephesus. Okay? And uh, so much so that the seven sons of Sceva tried to make money casting out demons. When they tried to cast some demons out of people, the demons said, Jesus, we know, Paul, we know, who are you? 
beat him up. That was in Ephesus. Um, it was in Ephesus where people burned their books and it came out to 50,000 pieces of silver. Uh, so we know that Ephesus was a place of uh, great spiritual power and Ephesus was a place of great contention in the faith. All right, and Paul, Paul, Paul tells Timothy, you stay there and make sure they don't teach uh, false doctrine. Ephesus was also the place where there were disciples who believed in Jesus but had not received the filling of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, have you received the Holy Spirit since you believe? And they said in the beginning of Acts 19, we ain't even heard of the Holy Spirit. Paul said, what's your, what's, what's your baptism? They said, oh, John. Okay, and then Paul told them about Jesus, laid hands on them, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. So, uh, one of the things Timothy was assigned to do was make sure no different doctrine than the true Christian faith, no false doctrine was being taught. Because understand now, in um, American Christianity, and, and definitely in black Christianity, the main thing is the worship service. Mm -hmm. But in most of Christianity, the main thing has been the teaching. I think black people love the worship service because we love to sing. We love to express ourselves. And black people turn preaching into an art. Okay. Um, and that's not to put that down. Art is very powerful. As a matter of fact, America feasts on the arts. And the arts are where people are attracted to spend most of their time. But um, in, in so much of Christian, I was telling somebody the other day, one of my friends asked me, what was my dream? I said, my dream is to have a big Sunday school. Because at one time in the Midwest, there were Sunday schools with 6,000 people. At one time in Brooklyn, I'm told, the Sunday schools of all of black Brooklyn got together and marched down the street and they had a Sunday school parade. I think they still have it, it's just very small, it's nothing like what it used to be. Right. But I think uh, one of my goals um, as I come towards the end of my pastoral career is to have a big Sunday school because I want people to emphasize teaching and not just preaching and singing. Because, uh, and especially black preaching, because black preaching is exciting and dramatic, but you can be excited and have drama and not know what the heck you are talking about. <laughs> you can be excited and have drama and not know what you believe. And I'm, 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 I'm sorry to say, but I've been in church all my life. I've been a pastor uh, over 40 years. I've been pastor 31 years. I've been preaching over 40 years. And a lot of black people don't know what they believe. Okay, that's why this word doctrine is so important. The word doctrine that's used here in 1 Timothy 1 and 3 is the Greek word didaskalia, didaskalia, D-I-D-A-S-K-A-L-I-A, which means teaching. It is kalia, it means teaching, okay? And it also means the substance. So this is kalia, the doctrine that Paul is pointing to is teaching of substance. And, and that's why the verb teaching of correct substance, all right? And so doctrine, let me give you a working definition of doctrine, because doctrine is very important. A doctrine is a set of beliefs and practices uh, gathered around a certain emphasis. Uh -huh. Shall I say it again? Yes. A set of beliefs and practices gathered around a certain emphasis. A set of beliefs and practices gathered around a certain emphasis. So when you have a doctrine, you have a set. There's more than one. A set of what? Beliefs. And what else? Practices. And what else do you have? You always have a certain emphasis. Doctrines, the reason you have different doctrines is because human beings emphasize 
uh, certain things. Human beings collect certain things and human beings emphasize certain things. And so uh, Paul was telling Timothy, his true child in the faith, his mentee, his leader in training, he was telling them, I left you in Ephesus so people would preach the right set of beliefs and have the right set of practices and have the right emphases. Because that's what doctrine is. Now, we have a doctrine in our church it's called the Doctrine of Christian Holism. If you don't know it, uh, you can call the church. And Sister Goodman will send you a copy by email or send you a letter copy and you should look at it. It talks about what our central core beliefs are uh, as a church. Because every church has a set of beliefs. More than one. Every church uh, has a set of beliefs about God, about God, about the Holy Spirit, about the church, about the society. Every church has certain practices, things that they do. Okay? And um, in some churches, people don't shout. Okay? Um, and this is how doctrine and practice ties together. Let me mention this. In Pentecostalism, there's an emphasis on joy and there's an emphasis on sacrifice. The emphasis on joy comes from sacrifice. Okay? That if you sacrifice and you live a holy life, you have a certain walk with God wherein you have joy. And so Pentecostals had a doctrine that emphasized holy living, that emphasized sacrifice, and emphasize a related thing to sacrifice, and that's joy. And because they emphasized joy, they went back to the Old Testament and began to emphasize certain things in the book of Psalms. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in that. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Enter into his gates uh, with thanksgiving and to his courts with praise. Be thankful and bless his name. The Lord our God is good God. He's a great king above all. Come on, come on. Woo! He's trying to make me shout. He's trying to make me start preaching. Hallelujah. He's trying to make me start preaching up in here. But because they emphasize uh, uh, holy living and sacrifice and joy, they began to shout. Yes. They began to dance. They began to take things and beat on them. All right. Um, a lot of denominations did not want to do the African things uh, like rhythm and beating on things and loud singing. But uh, really, even before Pentecostalism, in true, well, I won't say true, in Southern black religion, they believed that you had to have the spirit. It was an emphasis on being possessed by the spirit. And then when you got the spirit, the spirit would make you move, would make you dance in a circle, in the ring shout. The spirit would make you fall out. The spirit would make you cry and weep at the mourner's bench. Uh, and those things weren't practiced by all Christians. Episcopalians didn't do that. Presbyterians, for the most part, did not do that. Methodists did that. Baptists did that. And of course, Pentecostalism comes out of the Methodist church. A lot of Methodists don't know that. And what's the difference between Methodism and Pentecostalism? An emphasis on certain beliefs and practices. That's all. And this is also true of theology. What is a theology? A theology is a study of God that is a set of beliefs and practices with a certain emphasis. So you have Luther's theology, the ideas of Martin Luther. So you have Catholic theology, the ideas of the great uh, Augustine and Aquinas and other great Catholics. The great Hans Kuhn just recently died. He's a great, great scholar. Okay. Um, wrote a book called Does God Exist? Fantastic. Uh, just recently died in his, in his 80s. Uh, uh, and of course, James H. Cohn, Black Liberation Theology. Gustavo Gutierrez, Liberation Theology, Latin America. 
feminist theology, Rosemary Ruth and Mary Daly, uh, a womanist theology, uh, Alice Walker, uh, and so many uh, uh, powerful black women, Jackie Grant, so forth and so on. And so we need to understand when you, you, when you see the variety in the Christian church, Baptists, Catholics, uh, Seventh day, you are talking about people who had a set of different beliefs and practices and emphases. Now, as the uh, NIV translation says, some of these things people begin to consider false. And the idea of what's right and what's false is an idea that comes out of early Christianity. As a matter of fact, the reason that books were collected and put into a set called a canon, okay, is that people were fighting over what's really Christianity. That fight still goes on today. What's really Christianity? Who really is teaching the truth? And this is very important. And so my working definition is a doctrine is a set of beliefs and practices gathered around a certain emphasis. And now, as I get, get ready to close here today, let me just talk about three dominant doctrines in our day and time. Uh, one is the prosperity doctrine, uh, propounded by Kenneth Copeland, Kenneth Hagen, the late great Dr. Frederick Price, uh, Creflo Dollar, uh, to some extent Joe Osteen. The prosperity doctrine emphasizes wealth and prosperity. That God wants you to be wealthy like their leaders. That God wants you to have a lot. Uh, it is charismatic. Charismatic is like Pentecostal. Charismatic believing and speaking in tongues. But they're two different doctrines. Y'all with me? Charismatic doctrine is different than the Pentecostal doctrine. The Pentecostal doctrine and a lot of people mix them together, but I want you in a Bible study to understand the difference. Pentecostal doctrine is people speak in tongues when the Spirit moves on them. The charismatic doctrine is the tongues is your spiritual language, which God gave you as part of salvation, that you can activate it in your mind, that you don't need any special unction of the Holy Spirit. It's yours. You can begin to speak in tongues whenever you want to. It's a spiritual language. You can pray in tongues. You can give revelation in tongues, so forth and so on. All right. And so, and you heard some of this last week when we had a revival. Some of uh, 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 the speakers were charismatic. And they believed that, uh, you know, God gave you a spiritual language and you should use the spiritual language. So, most of the prosperity leaders are charismatic, not Pentecostal. Okay, uh, they have a different, not only a different doctrine, but they also have a different history. They come from a different place. The Pentecostals come out of the Methodists, and, and a lot of black Pentecostals come right out of the Baptists. The Charismatics, they come out of the Jesus movement of the 70s, and they come out of um, a lot of Charismatic movements. Another uh, powerful doctrine in our day and time is right thought. The biggest proponent of this is Joe Osteen. He often emphasizes the theme of his father. You must win the battle of the mind. If you listen to any Joe Osteen son, he talks about how to think correctly. And he uses scripture. All right? Another doctrine that's going forth is I call it loosely special knowledge, special knowledge um, that uh, a new age book called The Secret has influenced a lot of Christians and um, a lot of Christians don't know the difference between correct doctrine in the Bible and new age doctrine. Okay? And there is a difference. Um, and there are a lot of teachers out here. There's as many teachers as there are teeth in your mouth. No, there's many more than that. There were 36 teeth, 32 teeth. There's many more teachers than that. But a lot of teachers teach, if you have the special knowledge of who you are in God, in Christ, 
if you have the special knowledge, if you have the knowledge that's not common, you'll be a different kind of person. And so, um, I think prosperity, prosperity doctrine is an error. Right thought doctrine is an error. Special knowledge doctrine is an error. Now somebody said, well, does that mean these people aren't saved? Um, I would not say that, that doesn't mean they aren't saved. I just say they be an error. Because you could be a Christian and be an error. Okay. You could be saved and, 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 and not be correct in your doctrine and your set of beliefs and practices around the emphasis. Well, Pastor Taylor, what is the right emphasis? The right emphasis is to emphasize the person of God, the presence of God, and the principles of God that's in the Word. Nothing more and nothing less. The person of God, and that's why we hear me talk, I'm always talking about God. Every now and then I talk about how you have to think Every now and then I talk about prosperity because I do believe if you're truly in Christ, you will advance in this life. Every now and then you hear me talk about special knowledge because the spiritual things are special. But what you hear me talk about all the time is God as a person. And then I talk about the presence of God. Pentecost Sunday was devoted to the presence of God. Pentecost Sunday was devoted to being filled with the presence. So a person of God, the presence of God, and the principles of God that's in the Bible. That's in the Bible, not philosophy, not theology. I think theology can sometimes help us illuminate. You heard me last week talk about Alfred North Whitehead, process theology, process theology the, the potential, what could be, versus the actual. Okay, so I want to introduce that and I want to stop there because I'm going to come back and work out of this framework. And I want to tell you, um, uh, couple of things. Um, number one, go to TCO, TOD.org, give a Wednesday night offering so we can pay for these lights, we can pay for this electricity, uh, we can pay uh, our technicians. And then I want to say on Sunday, I want all the women to tune in at 3 o'clock. We're going to have the Women's Day Committee 201 nominations. Courtney Lyons did a great job leading us in the first year of the pandemic. going to get a new chairperson, a new co-chairperson, a new chaplain, secretary, treasurer, financial secretary, senior rep, youth rep. It's going to be Sunday. Sunday is Black Belt Emphasis Sunday, but it's going to be Women's Day Committee meeting nominations at 3 o'clock. All right now, also we want to uh, thank everyone that's tuning in today. I want to call your name. If you're important to God and you are important to me, I thank God for you. Thank God for your faithfulness. I pray for your victory. Amen. By the person of God. And I pray that you feel the presence of God every day, not just Sunday. And I pray that you practice the principles of the word. Brianna Palacios is here. Thank you, Brickhouse. Reverend Brother Thompson. Sister Iris Graves. God bless you. Sister Graves, 92 years old. Amen. She's in the Bible study. God bless yes. you. Sister Graves, one of the Negro women of America. Uh, Deacon Page, Pamela Ingram, Candace Davis. We thank God Candace went in Tuesday. Amen. And had a good outcome. Let's praise God. Kim Jones, Phyllis Panky, Deacon Robinson, Diane Caldwell, Reverend Donald, Brother Douglas, Sharon Kennedy, Sharice Champlain, Jason Jackson, Dakota Barnes, Reverend Young, Tisha Cripe, Kalisha Bernash, Sister Douglas, Vera Hallett, uh, Marion Tucker, Christine Carey, Rosa Wilkerson, Annette Peterson, Lorraine Brand, Sister Kearney, Gladys Donington, Renee Cook, Juanito Guerra, Tina Wiggins, Brother Kearney, Deacon McBeth, Cynthia Bright, Crystal Jackson, Yvonne Prince, Carol Goodman, Dorothy Blau, Ann Blau, Ebony Richardson, Elaine Rabelais, Elizabeth Green, and Sister Moore. Wow, let's give God a hand. People who signed in, let us know they out there. Thank God for it. God, hallelujah, is a person, not a force. Not an idea of God as a person. You have to experience the presence of God in your life through the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will lead you to the principles that the Holy Spirit led other men to right now. Amen. This is the correct doctrine. And it's a lot of false doctrines out there. Amen. The Bible said people have itching ears. They want to hear certain things. And I'm a witness. Amen. So we're going to uh, take a break. And we're going to come back. And let's... <laughs> let's 
let's begin talking about uh, this thing called doctrine. But don't, so when everybody come back, but if you don't come back, don't forget, 3 p.m. Sunday, women, let's get a new leader, let's pray for it, pray that we will have God's leader lead us into uh, a blessed Women's Day. I'm so appreciative of you turning in tonight. Uh, it is so important that we have the right doctrine. Amen. So we're going to just uh, go out uh, and I'm going to pray that these three P's be yours. God, we thank you for being the person that we need. We thank you. We can feel your presence. And we thank you that the principles of the word are made clear by the Holy Spirit. Thank you for so many people watching tonight, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness. Now, as we leave, keep us in your spirit. Bring us back to the overflow to give a blessing. In my name is his name of the Lord Jesus. We pray God's people said, amen. Let's give God praise, everybody. I want to remind you, you're going to make it through COVID by the grace of God. Hallelujah. I was telling the brother in the Uber the other day. Hallelujah. He had gone through some tough times. We started talking about the Lord. I started telling about Romans 5. Wherever sin is uh, abound, grace does more abound. And then grace rules. Hallelujah. Evil and sin is not the ruling force of the world. The grace of God is. Believe that. Live in that. Amen. And uh, stay with correct doctrine. We're going to take a 10 minute break and then we're going to come back. Come back and join us and uh, ask me a question. I'd love to answer. God bless you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Hit it. Let me hear my boy, DJ Hatton. The door is open. The devil is alive. God is blessing you right